Which is the ultimate king of 2023 heavy trucks? Mac Anthem diesel truck versus Tesla electric semi? Let's break it down in today's video. After what feels like an eternity, a long wait of nearly five years, Tesla is finally going to deliver its electric semi truck to the first customer. The introduction of the Tesla semi alarmed several long standing competitors, particularly Mac, a 117 year old truck manufacturer. The Tesla Semi, as a new contender, creates a great impression with its lightning-fast 5-second acceleration. However, Mac also launches the Mac Anthem truck, a highway monster with unrivaled power. When pitted against the equally powerful Mac Anthem, which runs on gasoline, how can a Tesla Semi possibly win? Let's find out in today's video. The first Tesla electric semi trucks have been recently delivered to PepsiCo and Frito-Lay. The Tesla semi has amazing power and range figures, but its greatest advantage will be its low emissions. However, at 1.7 kilowatts per mile, it may be more expensive to charge than anticipated, unless you charge it at a discount. Particulate matter and greenhouse gases are two of the many pollutants emitted by diesel trucks. The World Health Organization estimates that particulate matter in the air kills 4.2 million people every year. In the United States, 70% of the particulate matter and 60% of the nitrogen oxides comes from diesel trucks. It's a big deal to get them off the road. The full specifications of Tesla's truck have not been made public. Cargo capacity will be slightly lower than that of a diesel due to the weight of the battery, but not by much. The long range edition's range of 500 miles is impressive, albeit refueling will take longer. It is believed that haulers will purchase it due to the cost and maintenance benefits. It's a much more pleasant truck to drive thanks to its increased power. It won't lose speed when climbing hills, and smoother, quieter ride and fewer buttons. Like any good Tesla, it has a single central seat and an electronic control panel. One figure stood out the 1.7 kilowatt hours per mile of electricity consumption. As expected, this is far more than the Tesla Model 3 car, which consumes only one quarter kilowatt hour per mile. Comparatively, it outperforms the 2.2 to 2.8 kilowatt hour mile range offered by comparable electric trucks from Volvo, Mac, BYD, and others. Unfortunately, current regulations require a fuel economy of 7.2 miles per gallon or more from diesel trains. The price of gas at $5 per gallon, a new high due to the conflict, is 70 cents per mile. How much does 1.75 kilowatt hours of electricity cost? At the average cost of 23 cents per kilowatt hour across the country, the grid is a viable option. However, as a commercial electricity user, you will never pay that price, especially not during peak hours or at DC fast charging stations. The cost of DC fast charging can add up quickly. It requires large, costly chargers that can cost as much as $100,000 per. Users with high persistent peaks, like chargers, will pay considerably more because the circuits that bring it in are already expensive. Because of this, most 50 to 350 kilowatt hour automobile chargers cost between 30 and 50 cents per kilowatt hour. Considering Tesla's track record, one may assume that charging from a megawatt charger for the semi will cost more. If the price per kilowatt hour is more than 40 cents, it will be more than the price of fuel. The average cost of repairs for diesel vehicles is 17 cents per mile. Due to its electric powertrain's lack of moving parts, the Tesla Semi will almost probably be cheaper to maintain. As a result, there is wiggle room to make the cost of operating an electric Semi lower when using quick chargers. A simple solution would be to avoid using rapid chargers in public. The majority of these vehicles are purchased by businesses for use in transporting goods between warehouses. The pickup location will load the truck, and then the truck will drive to the delivery location. Those stations will act as the charging points. There, it's possible to make an attempt to consume and install power that costs less. Solar panels could be installed at these storage facilities to take advantage of the low cost of solar energy only a few cents per kilowatt hour in sunny areas. But this would need a large upfront payment or loan, and the sun only shines during the day. Trucks will need to be charged from the grid or depot batteries at night or on cloudy days. That's not completely out of the question, especially if your timetable allows you to charge most of the vehicles throughout the day and therefore reduce your overall costs. Trucks that travel long distances can only be driven by one person for 11 hours a day. What this means is that they have a daily charging window of 13 hours. 
they're perfectly capable of doing so at a slower speed of 50 kilowatts, which is still far faster than the speeds at which most modern cars travel. With bulk contracts in place, that price may drop below 30 cents and begin competing favorably with diesel. Currently, the Tesla Semi lacks a bed, preventing it from being utilized for team driving, although this may change in the future. The fastest means to get cargo moving on land, team trucks can drive for 22 hours a day. Rail is far slower than even one-man trucks. Those megawatt chargers aren't cheap, but a team vehicle will need to utilize one. Now, let's take a look at the comparison between Mac Anthem diesel truck versus Tesla electric semi. Tesla has been unusually secretive about the exact specs and performance metrics. We may only speculate, but thanks to certain data provided by the EV industry behemoth, we can get a good idea. Elon Musk has stated that the semi will be equipped with three motors. When added to the power of the motors in the other Tesla EVs, the combined output is likely to be in the neighborhood of 900 horsepower and 1,600 pound-feet of torque. Because of this, the time required to accelerate from 0 to 60 miles per hour can be reduced from 20 seconds fully loaded to 5 seconds unloaded. This is a very impressive set of results. However, the Mac Anthem has several additions, MP7, MP8, and MP8HE. The output can be customized between 325 and 505 horsepower and 1,260 and 1,860 pound-feet of torque, respectively. The true distinction, however, shows itself in operational efficiency. Acceleration from 0 to 60 miles per hour can be accomplished in 60 seconds in a fully loaded Anthem. Compared to the Semi, that is painfully sluggish. The driver of a Tesla is situated in a unique, high-up position in the middle of the vehicle for optimal sight thanks to the cabin's basic design. Two 15-inch touchscreens provide access to climate control and vehicle settings. In addition to the driver's seat, there are two more seats in the vehicle. However, based on what we saw, there appears to be no place to rest your head at night. We will have to wait and see whether there are any adjustments to it. The cabin of the Mac Anthem, on the other hand, is more conventional, with numerous buttons and space for a kitchen, refrigerator, shelves, and beds. There are a plethora of controls on the dashboard specifically for the driver's use. In a lot of ways, you can customize your sitting experience. The large sleeping area is the most notable distinction. The drivers can get some shut-eye on long trips thanks to the installed mattress. This is a tried-and-true cabin design that has been widely used. The price tag is another major distinction. In an effort to shake up the transportation industry, Tesla has priced the semi competitively. Prices range from $150,000 for the 300-mile range model and $180,000 for the 500-mile range version. After taking into account the tax credit reduction, however, the price range is now only $110,000 to $140,000. Conversely, the Mac can cost anywhere from $100,000 for the cabin version to $140,000 for the sleeper models. Prices for the other well-liked diesel-powered trucks are sky-high in comparison. Although Tesla promises that the battery can be charged to 70% in 30 minutes, in actuality, you should not regularly charge more than 70%. In due time, the cost of high-power DC will drop, solar energy will be abundant and inexpensive from 7 a.m. to 3 p.m. Battery-operated trucks will schedule their recharges at that time, and they may even stagger their visits to solar-powered charging stations. Payback on the investment in an electric truck to replace an older polluter will be rapid, and the end cost will be significantly lower than diesel. In contrast, early megawatt charging stations will likely cost more than 40 cents per kilowatt hour. The battery's mass is also a concern. This is a problem because the maximum weight for electric trucks is only 82,000 pounds, just 2,000 more than regular Class 8 trucks. For this reason, various companies are working to develop hydrogen or ammonia-powered or environmentally friendly synthetic fuel-powered trucks. For all that hydrogen does not make much sense in automobiles, its little weight may give it an edge in trucks. However, while batteries can recover over 90% of the energy input, hydrogen fuel cells can recover only around 40%. You'll be paying twice as much for electricity, but you can mitigate that by producing hydrogen solely from zero or low-carbon sources. The effectiveness of these alternative fuels is still debatable. That pretty much wraps this video up, guys. Thanks for watching. So, which one is your favorite? Mac Anthem diesel truck 
or Tesla electric semi? Share with us in the comments below. Make sure you subscribe to this channel with a bell notification if you enjoy watching our content. We upload some awesome stuff here which you will most certainly enjoy. Hit a like on this video and leave a comment below. See you guys in the next one. Guys in the next.